Uh, yes, hello, and welcome to our next installment in our series of uh, programs on playing card games solitaire. Well, we have a uh, question here from one of our viewers, Sal from Saskatchewan, uh, writes in, um, uh, Hey, card guy, uh, how about more uh, kind of classic uh, solitaire games, um, getting us back to basics? Uh, so to speak. Well, Sal, I think what you're driving at is a game that is similar to that classic um, seven-pile game of solitaire that is so synonymous with the game, it's actually called Klondike, and uh, you can look up one of our previous tutorials on the matter, uh, but if you're looking for something similar, uh, I've got a game for you that is a cousin of Klondike, and like any cousin, it uh, hails from a similar uh, location. It may have been brought up uh, by similar stock. It may look similar, but it does have a couple of notable differences. So if you think about Klondike, uh, you may recall that that is a region in uh, northwest Canada. Uh, do you recall what territory that is located in? If you went ahead and guessed uh, Yukon, you are correct. So the game today is called Yukon, and this is a game very similar to Klondike, uh, but does have some notable differences. So why don't we dive in and take a look at this fun game uh, that should look familiar. First, let's begin with a reminder about our deck. So as you know, we start off our games with a 52 card standard playing deck, as you uh, as you see here. Uh, decks, of course, include two colors, red and black. It includes four suits, as, uh, as you know, with 13 ranks uh, per suit, ace through king. Uh, next, go ahead and uh, grab those cards and give them a good shuffle. I, I use this uh, riffle technique here, and uh, as you may recall from previous programs, go ahead and shuffle those seven times to give yourself the, uh, uh, the maximum randomness uh, to begin the game uh, from a nice uh, clear, clean slate, so to speak. Okay, let's first talk about the layout of the game. Now, it's going to look similar, but there will be some differences. First, we begin with a nice clean playing surface, and you deal out 28 cards like you normally would for Klondike. One card on the left, seven on the right, the top card flipped up, seven piles, as you know. And your job is to build down on the tableau. If there is a black king, place a red queen, then a black jack, and so on. Once you have discovered those aces, go ahead and move them up to the foundations, as you see illustrated here. And once those foundations are established, your job is to build up in sequence within that suit. On top of that ace of hearts will be the two of hearts and the three of hearts, and your job is to get all cards placed on the foundation. Now, those remaining cards normally are held in your hand as stock, and you deal them out, but not in Yukon. Here, all of those cards, all 24 remaining cards, will be dealt out. And you will place those 24 cards in groups of four on the six piles to the right. It's a little bit unusual where all cards are dealt out, but that's uh, what makes the game fun. All the cards that are uncovered are available to play upon. Uh, and you must take with you any cards that you draw from the middle, as you're going to see here in a minute. That's what makes it challenging. So let's go ahead and play a game. So, begin with a clean surface and deal out your 28 cards as you normally would with Klondike. Seven piles, uh, one card on the left, then two, then three, and seven on the right. I've sped it up a little bit here to kind of get to the point. Now, these remaining cards you normally would peel off uh, three at a time in Klondike, but not in Yukon. Here, you take those 24 cards and continue dealing. Take those six cards and place them like so. Then another row of six so that all 24 cards are presented. And so you can see all cards. And all cards are now dealt out and ready. So let's begin. Uh, well, the first thing that I see here is that we can go ahead and move that ace up front. And we can place the two of clubs on the club foundation and the three of clubs on top of that. That's a good place to start. That reveals a nice ace of diamonds. Uh, and you all notice that uh, we have the first position open, and only kings can claim those empty positions. But which king to choose, the black king or the red king? Well, I'm going to choose this black king, and remember, you have to take every card with that card, um, because that reveals a face-down playing card, and I like to get those revealed as soon as possible. Now then, play continues uh, by building on top of available cards. 
Uh, that red 9 needs a black 8. That red 4 needs a black 3. And you know that classic move from Klondike. Uh, but remember, when you see a card to move, you have to take the cards that are on top of it. Uh, that is the challenge of the game here. So let's look and see what we have here. Uh, that red 3 can go on the black 4 just like that. Looking for red 7 for that 8. You see that 2 of diamonds? It'd be nice if that 2 of diamonds was available. So what if we take that black 3 there and all the cards on top of it, place it on the red 4 that's available. That opens up the 2 that we can place on the foundation, which further opens up the card below. Now then, which red 5 do we want? There are two available. You have to take all the cards with you. So let's see here. I like this red um, 5 of hearts because it reveals an ace. And remember, your job is to get foundations established just as soon as possible to move cards up top. That is the goal. Now then, do you see the red 10 there? What can we do with that red 10? Which plaque 9 would be best to place on that red 10? I usually choose the card that helps me get those aces up to the foundation. So I can take that ace of spades, I can place it up top for the spade foundation, and play continues. Now this red 10 can work very well on this black jack. We continue to peel off cards. Now do you see that black 8? There are a couple of red 7s that we can play. Which one works best? I like this red 7 here because now that red 5 is available. And this black 7 on this red 8 helps me with revealing that red queen. Now, which black jack is most helpful for us to place on top of that red queen? Now, it gets a little bit cumbersome, but this is a nice long run that we've built here. And I'm going to go ahead and grab all these and place it on that red queen. Kind of fan these out again uh, so that we can see everything. But that opens up a third position for us. And our job is to choose which king best is suited to take that position. Now I'm going to move this king here because that reveals a red 7. I can then pull that black 6, build it on top of the red 7, and open up a whole other position. Now that king can move over and we can reveal a flipped over card. Black queen right on top of a red king and we continue to play. Now this 4 here, do you see the red jack? We can play this red jack and everything on top of it on top of the black queen. And that will reveal a black 4 of clubs. And do you see where that black 4 of clubs can go? Well, that black 4 of clubs belongs up on our club foundation. So we can move up like that. Now we have another red queen that we can play. Now, of course, it gets a little cumbersome sometimes, but you have to grab the entire stack, place it on that black king, fan out all these cards so you can see everything within, and play continues. Now, do you see that two of hearts there? That two of hearts has some play. I'd like to get that in motion here. So if I move that black four and put it on the red five, now that two is revealed, and we can build it on the heart foundation. But look what happens next. We also have the three that's available, and there's a four and a five. So you can see by grouping cards and moving them around, you can reveal strategic cards to place up top on your foundations. Now then, that red five leaves, we can replace it with another red five. And then we open up a black six, and we again look to see what's next for us. What can we play on top of those exposed cards? Sometimes you have to pause and think about it. Black six on the red seven. Let's flip this card here, eight of clubs. And it does sometimes take some thought. That red seven can place on top of the black eight. Oh, this is helpful. Now we have a two of spades. We can begin building up that spade foundation. And I've got a three that can go there. We can also pull up the four. And again, moving cards up to the foundation, that's our goal. We want to get as many cards placed up there as possible. So now we're looking, and it looks like we may have exhausted all of our moves. Any black threes, any black queens, no black fours. Yep, looks like we are out of moves. Okay, well, you know what? That's a pretty good outing, and I think a pretty good run for our first run of UConn. So I hope you enjoyed uh, learning a little bit about a game uh, that I think of as a cousin of Klondike. Uh, it's a lot of fun to play. It's going to feel familiar, but it's going to throw a monkey wrench into your normal Klondike game plan. Uh, so be ready. Uh, again, thanks for joining me. I hope you enjoyed our lesson. And hey, be sure to, uh, you know, check us out next time.